Dante Moore is going to be an Oregon Duck. Dan Lanning has got his biggest recruit yet here in his time as Oregon football's head coach. And we haven't even played a game yet. Just some instant reactions here. Here we go. You are Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Oregon Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, it is that time once again for Locked on Ducks. Briefly, I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin, D1 play-by-play broadcaster and lifelong Oregon Ducks fan. Thanks for making this your first listen or your first view of the day. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Like, comment, subscribe, wherever you're listening to or watching the show. Thank you to all of you who have already done so. This will be just sort of a, a little quick reactions, instant reactions pod to the commitment of Dante Moore. Uh, It happened yesterday morning. I was heading out the door as it happened, so I wasn't able to record then. And then we were at the Mariner game that went 11 innings. Eugenio Suarez went bomb squad in uh, the bottom half off Sergio Romo. We got back a little after midnight. So doing this as quickly as uh, I can, but just a little quick weekend edition of the pod. Dante Moore is the highest rated quarterback commit in the history of the University of Oregon. That in and of, uh, of itself is a fact that I think for us should legitimize the hopes we have had for Dan Lanning and the staff on the recruiting trail. I think this is huge for Kenny Dillingham because when the staff was getting assembled, you know, Lanning, of course, is the head coach, and then it was, you know, Lou Poise, the D.C., and like, oh, we got Junior Adams from Washington, and we got this coach from over here and that coach from over there, and, uh, you know, Carlos Lachlan's coming in, and Demetrius Martin's coming from Colorado. Most of them had the reputation as being a great recruiter. Dillingham didn't really have that. I think on the staff, if you're talking about major coaches, he was the biggest question mark and still remains that to an extent because we haven't seen what he's going to be able to produce on Saturdays. But the fact that as a first time play caller, he was able to maintain this uh, relationship. He you know, first talked to Dante when he was back at Florida State. Dillingham comes to Oregon. He's able to continue that relationship, grow that relationship and now get uh, a top 10 player in the class of 2023. And the number, I believe, four quarterback, I think he's got Arch Manning, Malachi Nelson, and there might be one other ahead of him. So he's, you know, top top three, four, five quarterback, whatever you want to say, in the in the class of 2023 might depend on where you look. He's a big-time prospect. He's 6'2", pretty good athlete. That's not what he's known for, though. He, he is a precision passer. He's got a very quick release. He's got a very repeatable motion, and his ball placement is, is really impressive. It, it is precision like it is, you know, uh, kind of what's what, what's the word I'm looking for? Death by a thousand cuts, but with the ability to throw the ball down the field as well. He, he's got a really good arm. He knows how to use it. I mean, there are just a lot of things to like with him and he is rated higher than Ty Thompson. I think Ty's motion is a little bit more of a, of a windup, but Ty's bigger, a little bit of a better athlete. And, you know, the the 2020, what it means for next year's quarterback room, I think I'll talk about that in full uh, a little bit later. But when I saw this news, I was stoked. I mean, I was absolutely stoked because this is a guy, you know, if you go back uh, over the last couple months on the show, and if you've been with me the whole time, thank you for, uh, for, for being part of the show and everything. But it seemed at the time after we missed out on uh, Nico that, Jaden Rashada was kind of the next logical choice. He's in the state of California. Oregon's recruited very well. He's, you know, a Bay Area kid. I mean, it's, you know, he he grew up not far from Oregon. He said he grew up watching Oregon games as well. But Dante Moore was kind of like, ah, well, you you never know. But he's from Detroit. I I mean, that's just not something you see very often. The fact that the Ducks were able to go into Michigan's backyard and grab the highest rated player in uh, the state and one of the highest rated players in the class of 2023, a quarterback, no less. I think it's just absolutely massive and shows you the recruiting prowess that this staff clearly has. And it's nothing but good news here because, you know, we've, we've been getting all these offensive commits, right? Kyler Casper and uh, Ashton Kozar, Jerion Dickey, Dante Dowdell and others. You wonder who else might follow. I, I saw we're in the running for a four-star tight end. I think I stayed at Georgia. I'll be honest. I don't fully uh, remember his name, but that that's not surprising since Riley Williams decided to go down to Miami. It's just a, a lot of really good ramifications that could come from this. I don't expect it to be a tidal wave. I know a lot of you are probably thinking right now, what about Richard Young? It's not impossible. It, it's, it certainly seems more likely when you have Dante Moore there because recruiting 
little more so in basketball, but uh, in football as well, can certainly be sort of a tag team affair. I just think that Richard Young is probably going to go to Alabama. That's where it seems, but you never know. Like, do our chances of getting him go up with Dante Moore committing to Oregon? Yeah, I absolutely believe that that is the case. But, you know, the other reason this is so massive for the Ducks is as far as a big-time quarterback prospect is concerned in the class of 2023, our eggs were kind of all in one basket here. I I saw something from uh, Avery Johnson, who committed to Kansas State, a four-star quarterback from the state of Kansas that the Ducks were looking at as well, that one of the reasons he felt like Kansas State was the best option for him was, you know, Oregon was interested, but really felt like they were all in on Dante Moore. So this was kind of the, the, the last option, if you will, right? It was Nico. We were right up there. We were right on the cusp. But then Tennessee swooped in, grabbed him at the last minute. Then Jaden Rashada had uh, a lot of hype from fans. He certainly had interest from Oregon and the staff. But he ends up leaving the West Coast. Dante is the biggest quarterback fish remaining in the pond and for Oregon to get him, a guy who was you know, committing on ESPN live and doing an interview with Matthew Barry right afterwards as well. I, I think it was great. And, and one thing... That I'll need to close with here because uh, I got to go for, for the day and I'll, I'll try to get out more content for you next week. But he was asked by Matthew Barry in that interview on SportsCenter about NIL and like, oh, it's such a big factor now. And like, how did that play into your decision? I've talked here on the show because I had the opportunity to talk to Dante Moore in person. And I was really impressed with his character and Cam Newton, his coach on uh, on a seven on seven team down in uh, Vegas at the OT7 tournament spoke very highly of his character and his leadership and how that distinguishes him as a quarterback as much as, if not more than, the physical traits that that, that he has. He was asked about NIL, and he basically downplayed it all the way. And I know there are a lot of probably more old-school fans out there who are going to love that. I'm going to put myself in that camp. I'm not anti-NIL. I understand it's there, but do I love it? No. I, I, I don't I don't love the way it feels all the time because right now, because there aren't enough kind of regulations about it, it's just kind of the Wild West. It's not what it is supposed to be in its purest form, or at least in in my in my view. So Dante Moore, he downplayed it all the way. And I think that is a testament to his character and leadership capability. Not that you can't be a good leader and care about NIL, but he 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 almost dismissed it entirely in his quote. Go go and find it somewhere. I'm sure you could uh, watch it on uh, on YouTube and listen to what he said. But he he was focused on football and choosing the right school for him. Uh, you know that's what that's what came into it first and foremost. Maybe it's a little bit of uh, of media speak, and he's deliberately trying to do that. But based on the conversation I had with him. He's not that sort of guy, and I love that he's all in on football first, and that's what clearly was was driving this decision. It's a big-time commitment. We'll, we'll, I'll continue to talk about it here on the show. I'll get you content as often as I can. My travel schedule is just hectic, and hotel Wi-Fi, 50-50. But we'll be doing the best I can. I appreciate everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and go Ducks.